you probably know intuitively already what we mean with a set. As a child, and maybe still up to now, you probably collected something. Stamps, or coins, Legos, or shells, etc. Let us take the example of stamps to examine the basic properties of a set. What you basically do is that you collect different objects, stamps, and you put them all together in an album. Such a collection of different objects is now a new object of some different type, a set. In mathematics, we also use the notion of sets. It is actually not so easy to give a precise definition, but our definition as a collection of different objects will do for us. In calculus and in the algebra, we will encounter sets. They come with some notation. Since you may not have seen this notation yet, or maybe forgot about it, it's good to look at this in this video. What is a set? Let us take some examples. We take the sets S1, S2 and S3, and set S1 consists of the object apple, banana and cherry. Set 2 consists of the object cherry and pear, and set 3 consists of the object pear only. And now you see those brackets over here. They are not there just to look nice, but they mean something. Those brackets are around the elements of a set. So they indicate that S1 is in fact a set. So it's important to make the curly brackets because it signals the fact that you're dealing with a set. Then in, in order to express that an apple is in the first set, we use this like euro sign here. Apple is an element of S1 and therefore we use this notation. In order to express the fact that pear, as you see, is not an element of S1, we have almost the same notation, but then we scratch the euro sign. So a pear is not an element of S1. Let's continue with some notation. We can do intersections from sets. What do we mean? The intersection of two sets is a new set. And uh, this intersection contains objects which are both in the first set and in the second set. So if we take the intersection of S1 and S2 and we get a new set, which contains objects which are both in S1 and in S2. Let's see. Well, apple is only in S1, so it is not part of the intersection. Banana is also only in S1, so not part of the intersection. And they have cherry in common, which means that the intersection of S1 and S2 is the new set consisting only of cherry. So what happens if you take the intersection of S1 and S3? You see that S1 and S3 have no elements in common. That means that the intersection is empty. So we express this with this kind of zero with a scratched. And that means that it is the empty set, a set with no elements. So it's not zero, it's an empty set. So we can take intersections, that's what's in either one of the two. We can also take so-called union of two sets, S1, union S2, is this cup over here. What does that mean? And then we take, in we get a new set, which consists of the elements which are either in S1 or in S2 or in both. So the union will become a big set because it consists of all elements of S1 and S2. So if we want to write down a union, we just start with the elements of S1, apple, banana and cherry to get our union. And then we continue with the elements of S2. We cherry, well we had that one already, so we do not need to copy it, and pear. And that's how you get the union of two sets. And the next notion, the notion of subset. S3 is a subset of S2 whenever all elements of S3 are also contained in S2. So that means that S3 is in fact a part of S2. 
Well, S3 is a set containing only pair. We see S2 contains both cherry and pair, so the set S3 is entirely contained in S2. So that's what's called a subset. So S3 is a subset of S2. Let's see, is S2 a subset of S1? Well, let's take a look. That should mean that all elements of S2 should also be in S1. Well, cherry is in S1, so that's fine, but pear is not in S1. So if S2 wanted to be a subset of S1, then uh, S1 should have had pear as well. It doesn't, so that means that S2 is not a subset of S1. Well, we also want to look at this a bit more graphically. That's possible, and we use so-called Venn diagrams for that. They are over here. So what do we do? We represent every set as an oval or a circle. So as one over here, and we put the elements A, B, and C, apple, banana, and cherry in S1. Then we can also draw S2. S2 contains cherry and pear, so C and P. So S2 is the circle over here containing both C and P. And then you can already see that the intersection of the two sets is the part over here where the circles overlap. And then we can draw S3 in the same figure. S3 contains only pair, so S3 is over here. S3 is fully contained in S2. As you see, I can see it from the figure because uh, the S3 is uh, fully contained, the circle is fully contained in the circle for S2. So that's a way to represent sets graphically. So now you know, again, all the basic notation for sets. Of course, we want to go on to sets of numbers. Let's do that in the next video.